Okay, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> uh, we were looking at uh, questioning skills and we, we had uh, looked at productive and <clears throat> unproductive questions. We looked at what are certain characteristics of good questioning. Okay, uh, I'd like to do a quick role play, all right? And uh, this is, so we're basically going to focus on um, asking questions, okay? But that does not mean you don't use the other skills that you've learned up until now, the skills of attending, responding, reflecting. Uh, it's good that you use those skills, but uh, the, uh, focus a little bit more on <clears throat> um, how you can not just get information, but also come to a place of helping your counselee uh, know certain thoughts or feelings that they have at this. Okay, so the the idea, the idea is not to solve their problem. Okay, this is just we are very very. Uh, yeah, we just want to know how we can help, uh, how we can improve our questions. Okay, so would somebody like to? Somebody like to? I need a I need a Mary, who's a nineteen year old student who's worried because she's not getting on with other students in her class, and I want a counselor as well. I will be Mary. <laughs> okay, she's quickly <clears throat> taken on uh, the, the role. Okay, so Jeffina is Mary. Um, I need a counselor. Okay, this is, this is only for learning, all right? So don't get scared and say, okay, I'm not going to, it, it's perfectly okay. You're not expected to be the best counselor. That's not the idea. The idea is just for us to learn. Okay, so who'd like to be the counselor here? This is the first time you're meeting with Mary, and uh, so your your uh, you know your first interaction with her. Okay, who'd like to? You can keep Jeffina as Jeffina. You don't have to call her Mary. <clears throat> yeah, somebody. Anita, Aradhana, Divya, someone, someone's raised their hand. Who's raised the hand? Divya? Okay, go ahead, Divya. Yes, go ahead. So it's just a <laughs> uh, talk, right? Uh, just I'm exploring more on uh, what the problem she's facing. Is it? Yeah, you, you, could, uh, you could also. Yeah. You could also um, uh, uh, help in reflecting and responding to her feelings. All right, it's just not a, it's just not information. But uh, think of her as coming to you to share something. All right, and the kind of questions you would ask to really elicit what she's going through. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, so Jeffina over here. <coughs> um, when you're thinking about the situation, think um, uh, think a little bit more, you know, uh, not realistically, but but something that you can you know you can also build on, so that you know if we need to ask you deeper questions, you'll probably be able to build on that as well. Okay, all right. So maybe something that you can think about, uh, somebody you didn't get along with when you were a kid or something, and what you felt so. Being more in the role will actually help in the situation. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead, uh, Divya. Okay. Hi, Jafina. Um, good to see you. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, hi, Divya. Uh, I think I'm doing good. I good to see you too. Uh huh. Glad you're here. Um, I would like to know what brought you here today. Uh, today? No, I just felt like I need to speak with someone. So I came here. OK. Uh, that's great. Thank you for coming. And I would love to uh, really uh, know you and listen to um, how I can help you. Is there something that's bothering you? Um, I think you can help me. That's why I'm here, by the way. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that bother me. A lot of stuff's going on in my mind. I don't know where to start. Oh, 
I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, um, is it something to do with your family or is it something that's happening in your uh, in your college or school? What what is what is really um, uh, yeah. the maybe not family i don't spend much time with them i spend most of my time at school so i think maybe at school something i don't know oh okay since you mentioned school uh, what course are you doing oh at school i am in 12th grade this is my last year at school oh okay uh, what I'm uh, sorry, what was the course that you were doing? I'm doing a computer science in 12th grade. This is my final year at school. I'll be moving to college next year. Wow, that's great. That's a, a very interesting subject. So, how do you like computer science? Computer science? Uh, I was forced by my parents to be here. So, I'm just trying to memorize the coding. Just just that. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, is there something that you like about the course that you're doing? Is there something that you uh, makes you excited to go to the school? Something no, that there is absolutely nothing that makes me excited. All my friends are at commerce, and I am here at computer science, uh, and. Yeah, I, I don't feel like it's it's my subject or I wish I was in commerce sitting with my friends. Uh, oh, yeah. that must be so hard. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Even I had the same experience uh, when I was doing, uh, you know, my 11th and 12th. Mm, I, I completely understand how hard it must be. Um, so you mean to say you don't have any friends uh, in your school right now? It makes me feel better that you understand like how I'm feeling because when I go and tell my parents how I'm feeling, they just tell me to study. But school is not just about studying. I need friends. I need to talk with someone. But they just don't understand. And I don't like going to school anymore. I wish I could skip this whole cult and just fly to college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Uh, uh, so uh, whenever you come back uh, from school, are you a day scholar? Or? Yeah, I'm a day scholar, yes. Oh, so you get uh, to spend, um, you know, this eight hours, probably eight hours in a day in school, right? Yeah, but I don't oh, do anything uh, other than reading or studying or just looking around. I don't mm. have anyone to speak with. Oh, that must be really bothering. Um, so what do you think about uh, even uh, like uh, anyone that um, you spend time in the school, uh, like any, like even a teacher or anyone who, who, who seems friendly to you in the um, school? Oh, uh, actually, no, but I have one of my friend as I told, she's doing commerce. So whenever I have a break, I try to go and meet her. But still, okay. she has her own works and everything. I wish I had some friends in my class. I wish I could speak with them. But something is stopping me from speaking. Something is not right. OK, I hear you. So uh, do you mean to say that you're not able to relate to them due to something? I think so. Maybe. What makes you think so? I feel they are different. They don't understand me when I go and speak, maybe. OK. Um, in what ways are they different? Mm. I'm not very sure about it, but I feel they are just <laughs> They just don't get me when, uh, oh, even my jokes don't get them. Oh, OK. So do you recollect any incident where uh, you talked with your friend and they they just uh, 
had a, you know, you experienced a negative feeling? Do you recollect any incidents? Yeah, so uh, I was, when I went to school, I know uh, my friend is not there, so I thought I'll make new friends. So I went, I approached them, but uh, yeah, I just told them Jeffy now, but I didn't like how they looked. And uh, I was just telling them about uh, what I do, how I came into computer science. I felt like nothing makes them happy when I speak with them. I feel like they're not, they just don't like me. That's what I feel. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> Is it done? Yes. <laughs> I don't know where to end this. <laughs> I can talk, but I might take a lot of time. <laughs> Thank you, Jafina, for responding. <laughs> that is Thank great. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was a good job, Divi. I think you did such an excellent job. You did, you did, you did exceptionally well. That is, that is wonderful. Okay, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, Jeffina, maybe I'd like you to respond as to <clears throat> what did you, uh, how did her questions help you? I mean, she did a great job in responding and reflecting to your feeling. How did her questions help you? I felt like uh, all her questions. Can you do something? Yeah. So, yeah, so, so I felt like all her questions actually were similar to my responses. Like from my response, she's making a question. So I felt like we are not going out of the topic. Uh, so I felt like as she asked more questions, I was ex able to express more, uh, express more of the things, not just what I, it was not the same thing being repeated, but I'm getting into friendships, family, and so many other things. So I felt like I was able to express a lot. Uh, and I also like when she said about her past experience, like, I understand you. Uh, even that was helping me, like, oh, finally someone understands. And, and they're asking me questions. So if someone is understanding and they're asking questions, it, it makes me like, okay, I can share. I can, I can tell this. I can tell anything. So I feel like that. Okay. That was, that was good. Uh, uh, so so you've, you've done a, you did a great job, uh, uh, Divya. <clears throat> yeah. So if you looked at, <clears throat> now because this is, um, remember that this is this is an initial meet, but let's say you're going on to something that's more deeper, okay? And maybe that's uh, Jeffina. If you don't mind that, oh, we can't role play together because uh, Jeffina and I in the same room. It's going to echo really badly. Uh, would someone else be merry for just just for me to probably help to help you understand how some questions you can actually ask. <clears throat> to get them deeper to understand where they're at. So anybody else would just like to role play um, Mary because Jeffina and I are in the same room. If both of us are going to unmute, it's going to cause a lot of chaos over here. So somebody else, Divya, if you could be uh, Mary. Oh, okay, I'm very bad at making stories. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you would want, you could, uh, you'd like to, you, you'd want to bring up something that's more realistic for you. That's fine. Also, we don't have to take up this, the same thing. It was just as an example. So something you'd want, to, something very small that you'd like to maybe talk about. Uh, it doesn't have to be very personal. <clears throat> something small. Would you like to do that? Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So, hi, Divya. It's, uh, it's good that you, you've uh, come in here today. Um, how are you keeping? Hi. Uh, yes, I'm keeping well. Um, yeah, good. Good. I'm sure it took you uh, a lot of courage to come here today and really share what you have in mind. Is that so? Uh, yeah, I'm glad that I'm here and I can share some things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm. I'm also really glad and really appreciate that you've come in here today. So, so Divya, um, you know, even as you decided to come to see me today, uh, I wanted to understand what were you hoping uh, to really get from 
yours and my conversation today. You, you've had something in mind. I really want to know what were you hoping to get from your and my conversation? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, uh, basically, I'm going through a lot of stress uh, right now. Uh, so it'll be, uh, I thought it will be good if I can share uh, and get good, you know, guidance uh, through mm -hmm. this. Yeah, it's more mm -hmm. than I can handle. Mm -hmm. So I do see that being in the situation you are in where you're feeling stressed is not something you'd like to be. You want to be in another state of mind. Is that right, uh, Divya? Yeah, I don't um, prefer to be so uh, pressurized from every side. Um, okay. Yeah, I would love to be having some, you know, peace of mind and mm -hmm. some to for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so instead of feeling stressed, I hear that you said you want to have peace of mind, right? Right. Yeah. So, if I were to ask you, when you say you'd want peace of mind, my, I have two questions. You could answer them one at a time. Uh, peace of mind, I'd like you to tell me what would peace of mind really look like to you and where would you like to have this peace of mind? Um, yeah, if I think about that, uh, yeah, I would say that some time for myself uh, will be something that I'm really looking forward to and also mm -hmm. quality time with the family. Mm -hmm. um, I, it seems like... A, I'm not getting enough of that. So uh, if at least I get a portion of the day, you know, for myself as well as for a quality time with the family, I I would feel that I'm having quite good, um, you know, peace of mind in my life. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks for answering that. It, I think you've been able to really help me understand that you're, you're feeling stressed for the fact that you don't have <clears throat> enough time for yourself and as well as for your family. So for you, a peace of mind would really look like getting some alone time for yourself and some quality time for your family, right? That's right. Yeah. So if you were to get that, if you were able to find quality time for yourself, doing something that you like and also um, spending time with your family, how would that look like? What would it look like? How would you know that you've reached a state of peace of mind? What would be the evidence that you've reached that state? Um, I think I would be um, uh, much more uh, joyful. I won't be anxious like this. Um, mm -hmm. I would not you know, burst out my anger towards the family, to the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think it would create a better atmosphere at home. Okay. All right. So you you feel that you can, you would notice you're being joyful. You would notice that the atmosphere at home would be uh, much more at peace. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Let's okay. See. All right. Okay. So when you would you help me understand when you said joyful, uh, would you like to elaborate and tell me? What would you be feeling? What would you be thinking? What would you be doing when you're joyful? How would it look like in totality, being joyful? Oh, that means I'll be very energetic. I'll have the, you know, all my strength uh, to be the roles I need to be taking on, like as a mother and as uh, if it all like an employee or in all my roles, I will be very energetic. I'll be mm -hmm. passionate about mm -hmm. um, about the day. Uh, that's that's what I think. If I'm joyful, uh, that's mm -hmm. how I would be. Um, if, yeah. Okay. So I hear you saying that um, that that there are many roles you are playing right now: the role of a mother, a wife, uh, an employee, employee, and all of this kind of feel stressful, you would know that you are joyful when you're able to easily uh, assume these roles, play these roles without much of difficulty. Is that right? That's right. Okay. 
So if uh, so, among these roles that you spoke to me about, a mother, a wife, an employee, which is the role that you feel you're best at? Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, I strive uh, to be good at all of the roles that I try to do, but I would, uh, I would love me to be a better mother. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so I see wife. off the... Sorry, sorry, Divya, once again. Maybe a better mother, a better wife, because I think those are much, you know, I need to give more priority. Mm -hmm. So I see that this uh, being a mother and a wife is extremely important to you and you really want to give your best in this. Yes? That's right. All right. Okay. So what would your husband or your children notice if you gave it your best shot? Well, how would they know that you're fulfilling your role? Because they are the recipients to this role you're playing. How would your family, that's your husband and your children, know that you are doing an exemplary job at your role? I don't think they have any expectations on me. But uh, how I perceive it is uh, if there is a lot of um, energy and joy and peace and you know everyone in good you know good with each other i, I believe that is a you know i uh, think that uh, the family uh, circles around the mother mostly or the mm -hmm. wife the whole. so yeah when you're upset the whole family is upset so mm -hmm. if uh, uh, i would love myself to you know to be taken care uh, in a way that I can take care of mm -hmm. the family, yeah, in my roles. So you're saying that um, one, you, you you mentioned that your family may not have many expectations, or, or they probably don't uh, don't think you're doing a bad job. They think that you're doing okay. It's your perception about how you're you're playing these roles. So you feel that if you can take care of yourself, then you are in a better position to take care of your family. Or your children or your, your husband right that's right okay so when you say you want to take care of yourself what would be some steps that you would see you would be making in order to feel that you are doing that what would be maybe let's say the first one or two steps that you would take to show yourself that you are actually taking care of yourself uh maybe um exercise uh, would okay be um, okay another is i wish to you know i have a collection of books but never get to finish any so maybe reading is mm -hmm. something that i would love to do um, okay yeah so uh, yeah okay wonderful so i'm here i'm going to ask you a very different question here okay so let's look at the scale between one to ten one being um, that you aren't taking care of yourself too much, and 10 being that you know you are adequately and satisfactorily taking care of yourself. Where would you place yourself on the scale, Divya? Uh, maybe a four. OK. Why did you put yourself on the four? Help me understand why four. Um, Basically, I'm looking at the time um, that uh, is, uh, you know, invest in a day uh, mm -hmm. for this. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, then maybe a four. Uh, so, so what I understand is uh, you are satisfied with the time that you put in, and that's why you've placed yourself at four? Uh, oh, you mean to say the, uh, I, uh, the lower rating was for... Uh, yeah, one is uh, where you're least taking care of yourself. Ten is where you're most taking care of yourself. Where would you place yourself? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, I said a four. four. Yeah. Okay, so what is positively happening in four right now? 
okay. that you've placed yourself at four, not at one, shows that helps me see that you are doing some things right. So tell me what's going right at four. I, I feel like at least I have a wish to do exercise. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. All right. So that there's a desire that you want to do an exercise. You want to take care of your physical health, right? Right. Okay, excellent. Now, Divya, if you needed to move to five, you're at four. If you needed to move at five, what would you see different? <clears throat> if you were to move up, but just one point now, what would you see different? Yeah, actually doing it. Uh, like, yeah, planning okay. and sticking on to the plan. Okay, so so so, what what does your plan look like right now? When you're saying doing planning it and doing it, what is the plan that you have in your mind? Yeah, uh, basically to do it consistently, not to just do it in uh, maybe one or two days and then stop it, but just okay. to do it consistently. Okay, great. So you said being consistent at exercise, doing it <laughs> at a regular. Uh, at a regular interval rather than stopping right that's right okay is there anything is there anything else that will help you see that you're at five um maybe um investing much more on um kids uh, academics as well as the activities uh-huh so what would that small step ahead show you that you are actually being interested in your kids activities what's the smallest step that you may need to take or change to show you that you are being interested in your children's school and activities i think the smallest step would be at least talk about what what's going on with them during a day because most of the time uh, it will be mm -hmm. how was your answer will be just a good so to you know explore more on that uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of challenging in the busy schedule. So, yeah, uh, okay. I would love to see them opening up a little more and I'm able mm -hmm. to, being able to, uh, you know, uh, relate to them in a way that they'll uh, share a few more things. Okay. So, if, if, uh, so I see here that you have a very strong desire to connect with your children apart from the pleasantries. You really want to bond with them, right? So if if you needed to take, if you needed to bond or if you needed to connect with them, uh, what would be something that you would start doing tomorrow? I uh, think spending more time with them uh, in terms of, you know, playing with them or doing activities with them. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Try to do, yeah, but not like very consistent. Okay, all right. Now, if you were to reach these two things that you said, one is consistently exercising and spending some time bonding with your children every day and maybe talking to them, discussing some things with them, how would you begin to feel? Oh, that would make me so happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, so would you... Sorry, Vivea, once again. So much relieved. So relieved. So is that uh, some kind of a joyful state that you're looking at? Um, uh, I think I feel more of a sense of security if, you know, uh, I can bond with my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you will find security when you bond with your kids. Okay. So that, that's something that you're hoping that you can invest in <clears throat> as time goes by, being just able to uh, bond and th thus finding a security. What does the security in your children's life mean to you, Divya? Uh, I think uh, uh, mostly to know uh, and understand their struggles, what they are facing each day, and if at all, um, you know, I can handhold them anywhere as well as maybe pray for them uh, mm -hmm. and even involve other people to, you know, in their lives to guide them as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would like to expand uh, in those 
ways. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that kids have exposure to, mm -hmm. you know, different things. And I can also be a contribution there. Mm, okay, so you you are looking deeply connect with them in in the areas of their lives, connecting them with other people, knowing what is really um, uh, uh, heartfelt for them, so that you can handhold, you can pray for them. These are things that would would make you feel secure in in this relationship with your children, right? What would your children see as different? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Divya, once you, if you were to do this, what would your children see as different? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I think they'll be more uh, open to talking, and uh, because they know that I really care, so mm -hmm. they'll be, they'll be more open to uh, discussing things in their life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So, okay. uh, Divya, in the last five, ten minutes that we've spoken, uh, I'm still part of the session, okay, I haven't finished. So, in the last five, ten minutes that we've spoken, what are you taking back that is useful for you to do to help yourself feel more joyful? Um, yeah, I, I, I could, I, you know, um, come to these two things, like the exercise and uh, the connecting more with the children, spending more time with them. Like I could, uh, from the anxiety, the stress part, I could just, uh, it uh, it got boiled down to these two things. So mm -hmm. it was easier for me to, you know, pinpoint, oh, this is the reason that I'm going through this. Yeah, so it was very helpful. Okay, great. So would you look for evidences and clues that you are doing something to get yourself to be more joyful in the next week before we chat the next session. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so here, here's uh, now. Um, uh, I'd like so this was very, very uh, specific to coming to a, a situation or a solution, right? Uh, we didn't go about a lot more into finding out what and all of it. It's specifically to the situation. So what, Divya, what did you notice? What did you experience through the questions? Divya? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, the questions helped me explore more on uh, why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? And uh, also uh, to understand uh, where actually uh, the root causes of uh, the issue that I'm facing. Um, so when you asked me about, okay, you asked me about the roles, then you came to um, what what is the different, uh, what how different it can be. So I was thinking more on what could be different in my day. Uh, yeah. So it was helpful for me to explore more mm -hmm. and coming to a a point where I can understand, oh, this is what is making me so bothered. So right. it's just really helpful to, it's mm. like I got counseling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, right. Thank you. So, any other co comments about what you did find about the questions that helped uh, um, uh, Divya stay in, uh, you know, to get a certain structure or answer to what she was going to any other thoughts any other questions uh, comments okay nobody right so we'll, we'll just quickly move on because i have one two more sections to complete <clears throat> um so remember when you're using questions uh, it's important to know to understand that you know you don't question too much it's important to be aware and cautious about over questioning. So sometimes asking too many questions can send a message to your counselee that the counsellor is in control and may even set up a situation in which <clears throat> the counsellee feels that the counsellor has all the answers. OK, so uh, that's when you determine effective questioning techniques, it's important to consider the nature of of your your counselee uh, and and to help them move through that 
okay? So being careful that you're not over-questioning, that you don't seem to be the one in control and not the one as if you had the answers. Because finally, they will say, okay, now you know all my problem, tell me what's the answer, okay? So being careful not to come to a place of being uh, questioning in such a way that you're looking at so many details and not really help, helping them to reflect and personalize the issue. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, sometimes counselees can feel interrogated, right, when counselors ask a series of questions in a quick succession. And I'll, I'll show you a video on that. Now, the, it, it is important to um, uh, that, that the counselor softens questioning if you see that, you know, maybe let's say a counselee wants to respond at something. Okay, to ensure that they are able to reflect on each response. So that's something that you, you need to take care of. I'm going to show you all a video, and this is one of the first videos that uh, I had showed you all, shown you all earlier. It's got a part of questioning in it. Um, for those of you who have not seen the video, let me just uh, share that. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> Joanne, how are you? I'm okay. I've been a little bit better. Um, I am still Do you mean like a lot better or just a little bit better or huge amount better or just not really that much better? Or what do you mean better? Better? I would say just better, better. I can't quite rate it, but maybe, maybe a little bit better? A little bit? Like just a little bit or like a lot a little bit or a little, little bit? <laughs> Well, I would say a, a little, little bit, if I had to say between all of those options. Yeah, a little, little bit, if I, if I had to choose. But in any case, I, I am doing better, which I think is good. Um, so my boyfriend has been actually trying to make more time for the two of us together. Um, this last week, he um, had something planned with a friend, and I mentioned to him that I needed some time with him, and he then canceled his plans with that friend. and. We were able to have a nice dinner together. So did he cancel the plans right away or did he cancel the plans? Like, did you have to talk to him about it a lot or was it really hard to to, to get him to respond? Or how did you handle that? Or, or, you know, what did you, did you tell him how good you felt after that? Um, uh, so to answer the first part of that, um, which I'm having trouble remembering now. Joanne, how are you? Well, I'm doing better. I would say better this week. I, um, I had uh, a thing come up with my husband where I actually talked to him um, about this need that I have to spend more time with him. And he ended up uh, canceling plans with a friend and we had a great dinner together and we had a nice conversation. It was, it was really, really, really nice. How did you feel after that experience with him? I felt so much more connected with him especially with the fact that I voiced, you know, what I needed from him and he then responded and I'm not sure if he was really aware of that. So I felt just this whole weight lifted off of me. It was really great. How do you think he felt about it? Um, I actually think he, he showed that he valued what I, what I had to say. And I think he also felt really good about that time we spent connecting with each other. I think he, he thought it was a really positive thing. Did the two of you talk about it after? Uh, we definitely did talk about it um, a little bit. I think we're still kind of moving toward that place where we can be open with each other, but this was a really good first step in, in being open with our communication. Do you think there's anything you can do to encourage this to happen again in the future? I think so. I think if I, you know, next time I'm feeling this way, I could definitely talk to him again and just let him know my needs and let him know I'm, I'm wanting to spend some time with you. Can you make some time in your schedule and, and we can have you know a nice activity or dinner together or watch a movie. So yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. So uh, you would have the the next thing that we'd like to look into and if you noticed in in um, uh, the uh, uh, the video, she 
the flawed part of it showed a different kind of question, right? There was a lot of what we call as closed questions. And in the second one, there was a lot more of open questions. And that's what we'd like to look into, OK? So closed questions and open questions. What are open questions? Uh, open questions are those questions that generally cannot be answered in, in a few sentences, right? They are those that, given that encourage the counselee to speak, and it offers them uh, a, a way to, to, to bring about a lot more of feelings, thoughts, <clears throat> instances, behaviors. And this helps the counselor to gather a lot more information about the counselee as well as their concerns. So the best approach is to follow a response, uh, is, to, is to give an open-ended question um, uh, to the, to the counselee. So as best as possible, it is good to use open-ended uh, uh, questions. Okay, so especially when you're getting a response, to follow it with an open-ended question. You know, you paraphrase it, you reflect the feeling, and it encourages your counselee to share more, and avoids this repetitive pattern of question answer, question answer. So it, it's good to bring about open questions following a certain response that they would have that they would have had. Okay, now open questions generally begin with what why, how, <clears throat> or could. So there are some questions here. What has brought you here today? What? Why do you think that? How did you come to consider this? Could you tell me what brings you here today? So, so these specific details, uh, you know, uh, comes after you have questions that focus on the how, the what, the where, the when. You know, it, it gives a lot more of details to that. So just certain examples of these quest of open questions. The how question invites your counselee to talk about their feelings. Like, for example, the example given here is, how do you feel about the way your husband talks about separation all the time? It really helps you to see where, they're, where they are at at their feelings. Okay, The what questions leads to facts. Okay? It brings about factual details. Example here is what happens when your son gets angry. So the response may be, you know, he gets very aggressive, he shouts, he throws things. So it emerges certain facts. The when that information is about timing, or it gives you certain uh, information about what happened before or after the event. So when did this happen? When do you wish to talk to him about your problem? Like for for uh, Divya, if I would have gone on, I would have said that. So Divya, when would you like to start? exercising regularly or when would you like to uh, begin your first uh, you know sit up with your children so i would that would lead to that where you're actually getting them for an action plan okay so that's when the when questions happen <clears throat> the next is the where where questions reveals the situation or place um, the event took place so where does your child feel most comfortable right it it reveals where is it that they are best or where do you think you'd like to be in your um in your feelings of joy you know where, where what exactly does joy look like where would you like to be where, where is it that you will experience most joy okay why is it regards um the reasons of the event like examples are why do you think your parents are unhappy with you why does this job make you feel special so it it uh, goes into a lot more of intentions, a lot more of reasons, sources of the certain situation that they are actually talking about. Uh, we, we need to be careful about how we use the question why. We use caution in using that question why, because uh, often what happens is they can provoke sometimes a defensive feeling in your counselee. And it could and encourages them to feel as though they need to justify their answers in some way. Okay, like for example, the question here is, "Why did you get angry with your husband?" Right. So when you generally ask that, it's almost like a question that will put them at a defense. Or why haven't you been going to college? Rather, you could use something like, "You must have been angry with your husband, isn't it?" <clears throat> so they say, "Yeah, it made me really angry," and and they may go on or. What is it about college that you find challenging? So the way that you question with a why <coughs> sometimes can, can 
make it feel very fault fault finding. Okay, so uh, taking caution when you're using that why question. Um, uh, closed questions. Let's quickly look at closed questions. It is it it has its place. It's important, um, uh, and and it generally uh, is is used to focus on some very specific data or specific information, right? And they're usually answered with a minimal response, like a yes or a no or a not sure. So it can be very restrictive in its <clears throat> in its finding. And uh, 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 but then it has its place. There are sometimes it has its place, yeah, and sometimes these questions are appropriate, especially when you're trying to clarify and understanding something. And these questions usually start with the is, are, do. Like for examples, <coughs> excuse me. Do you stay with your parents? Are you working? Are you feeling sad? So it's specific answers that are given. Okay, now quickly, uh, just looking at um, the differences between the closed and the open questions. So open questions usually invite a counselee to view their feelings, and it is very, it is, it's a broad perspective that you get. Whereas in closed questions, it reflects a very small, narrow answer, and it's very specifically focused. Uh, in open questions, there's a high scope for exploration that they're thinking uh, deeper in a find solutions. Whereas in closed question, there is very little for self-discovery. Open question gives space to structure the client's answers. You're actually allowing them to structure it in a way they'd like, you know, to give you the details that they feel is necessary. Whereas closed questions are very factual. It can be very, very purposed. Open questions, um, when you give open questions, <clears throat> clients who are resistant can feel threatened with what kind, with what information to give. So it gives them the freedom to give as much as they would like to. Um, close questions for anxious clients may feel more uncomfortable. It's almost like it's a, you know, it's a, it's a format of question and answer. The open question, um, the, the counselee is setting the agenda for the conversation and you just follow through that. But whereas in closed questioning, it's the counselor that sets the agenda. In the open one, questions usually follow the, the lead of the counselee and thus helps the counselor make the first make the next response. But whereas in closed, questions are constructed to lead and sometimes to make a point. So the examples given here, you loved your father, didn't you? as against what do you miss about your father? You get a lot more of details just by getting into, into some of that, okay? Um, uh, just the last slide and then we're done. <clears throat> um, uh, so you, these are certain examples that are there, okay? Like for open questions is tell me about your feelings, tell me about depression, how do you feel you're going to do the semester, tell me about your family, how do they enter your decision? As against, when did you first notice you were getting depressed? Or do you think your grades will be lower or higher this semester? Do you feel your family is helping or hindering you with your decisions? So if you see it, all of this, they're very focused at very small, uh, it, it gives you a very small purview and not a wider one. Okay? All right. So um, uh, this, again, this skill is something that, uh, that, that, once again, you know, we need to keep doing to pick up. So in all of your communication with people, attempt to use questions that will enhance people to think rather than just finding factual information. And that's what you would do in an end counseling as well. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your patience with my coughing and my cracking. But uh, uh, would somebody like to just close in a word of prayer, please? <coughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for the beautiful classes that we had. God, we thank you uh, for the people around us. 
and God, you called us to be a light to the world. God, whatever we learn in this class today, I pray that uh, you will help us uh, to remember these things and to apply it in our lives so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we can pick someone when they fall, so that we can comfort the people around us and lead them towards you, Jesus. Uh, be with us and guide us. We are so thankful for the class. We are so thankful for everything that we learned. Uh, we give you all the glory and all the honor. I thank you for Pastor Jean. I thank you for all my classmates. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Have a good week. We'll meet you next week. Thank you. Pastor, are you there? Pastor? Yes, yes, Rosalind. I'm here. Yeah, hi, Pastor. Uh, oh, can you just give me a minute? I'm just recording. Yeah. Just let me just stop just a minute.